What's up, guys? And welcome to the Music Act Network. For those persons who are joining us for the first time, I am Chris Bailey, your host. Today we have an interesting show for you. Today we have the great, the great Corey in studios with us. And I'm sure a lot of persons have been anticipating this live stream from a few days now, but the time is finally here. Corey. Hello. What's up, bro? All is well. Everything is good. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes, man. Despite the, the challenges that we are facing today. <laughs> a serious day today. We can tell you that. Today was a serious yeah, day. We almost, I almost never made it to the Music Hacks Network tonight. But Boy. every day above ground is a good day. So we give thanks for that. Yeah, well, you know, you know it go. The challenge is coming up, but... You know what I'm saying? When, when the going gets tough, tough get going. Definitely. Yeah. All right, bro. So how have you been otherwise? I know the pandemic has been hitting real hard, especially for musicians. How have you been? You know something? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am kind of strange because I don't think of it as kicking real hard for musicians, but it mash up everybody. You know what I mean? Promoters feel it too. The artists, them feel it too. The people them who would normally go to a concert, them feel it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you want, uh, we're talking about the peanut man, the soup man, the man who sell them little bush and thing. You know what I mean? All those people, like the man who sell the cane and the coconut, all them people that benefit from show business, you know, so they're not just musicians. And we still don't come out of show business and entertainment yet. Pandemic hit hard for everybody, you know, so... Really and truly, to answer your question directly, I feel blessed because the bills still get paid and the children still stay fed and, you know, roofs over them head and thing and everything all right. So I'll be your gratitude, man. Definitely, definitely. Yes, man, I, I, I'm happy that you are looking at the positives. Um, in you have to, bro. If you don't, you lose your mind. And I only have one, so <laughs> can't lose it. Very true, very true. But, but even then, a person who is multi-talented as you are, then I think th things would have been a little bit easier because I was doing my research about Kurik. I realized that, well, I knew that you were a musician from yeah. way back. I just learned that you are a producer. Yeah. And when I looked on YouTube, I realized that you are an artist. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, man. But I mean, he's a multi talented, really, and truly, to me, it's just one talent in his music in him. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but really and truly, uh, you know, old time people say you turn your hand and make fashion. So, you know, I I have a creative, you know, vibe as it relates to music and the arts in general. And so you just mm -hmm. get busy and make things happen, especially in the downtime when there are no touring, tours happening. There's nothing, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. My brethren, Paul Barkley used to always say, put value to your time. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But, but um, um, how have you been balancing between all three facets? How have you been doing this? Um, if I'm being honest, I want to say that, you know, when, when, you can't, when you can't focus on one thing, everything else suffers, mm -hmm. you know, because there really is no such thing as multitasking. Multitasking in its truest sense is giving 100% to everything. To each of the each of the the, the 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 objects of your attention. So if I'm an artist, I give a hundred percent to that. I'm a producer, I give a hundred percent to that. I am, you know, a songwriter, I give a give a hundred percent to that. But you can't really give a hundred percent to everything if you're doing so many things at once. Something going to suffer. So how have I been balancing it? I'm still learning how. You know, what I mean, to tell mm. the truth, I'm still learning how to balance it all because being an artist really takes a lot. Out, out of you in terms of your, your, your dedication and commitment, um, you have to prioritize that. Like, you know what I mean? It have to be the most important thing to you, which is probably why we're not find that big hit song yet, because we still have to play, play a keyboard and we still have to be a musician, still have to be a producer and a songwriter and all of that. You know, so I've, I, I can't tell you that I've been balancing it well or poorly, but really it's still just a learn how to balance it all. Yeah. All right, uh, um, for, for our viewers' sake and subscribers, I, I definitely want to look a little bit more 
in the, into these three um, parts of, of music that you're, you're actually engaging. Yeah. But um, Quirk, K-O-R-I-Q. Yes, sir. Right? I realize that it is pronounced the same as your, your first name. Yeah, man. Uh, but, but what's up with that? Um, nothing is up with that. I mean, I'm going to tell you the story. I, I was doing a show um, quite a number of years ago, at least 10 years ago, possibly more. And um, one of the backup singers that were on the bus with us at the venue, she was just scribbling something. And, you know, a musician and we're all together on, the, you know, on this, this, this gig. So I went over to her and just start messing with her. I said, yo, I want to tell right. A love letter to your boyfriend. She said, no. She start laugh. And she said, you'd, okay. you'd be surprised if I show you what's on this paper. And I said, show me. Oh. She showed me the paper, K-O-R-I-Q. And I was like, wow. Without even understanding what she was telling me, it hit me that, yo, that's a cool way to spell my name. And she yeah. simply said, she just thought that that would be an interesting spelling to my name. So uh, it was years after that I decided to start recording my own music. And for some reason, my mind went back to that. And I just decided, you know what? I can't call myself Bounty Killer because that's already taken. I can't yeah. name Romain Virgo because that's already taken. I can't name Taurus Riley. There's already a Taurus Riley. So guess what? Me name Corick. Corick. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I, I think that that is pretty unique. Give yeah. thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Um, so... Uh, can you remember your, your very first time as an artist on stage? I, I've been watching a few of the clips when, when Taurus, when you guys are on tour and yeah. Taurus, we call no, the lion. <laughs> Good and times. When I'm looking for a lion, I realize Corey shows up. You know? Yeah, man. Can, yeah, can man. you describe that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when them call the lion, the lion shows up. I mean, we don't know how else we explain that. But uh, my first time on stage as an artist, I don't remember exactly the date. It might have been about five, six years ago. Uh, mm. At the Jazz and Blues Festival, Miss Myrna Haig um, saw me playing at a wedding. And I was playing and singing. And she was apparently quite impressed. Mm. Uh, by then, I had already recorded a few songs. One or two, you know? Mm. So she got in touch with me and, and asked me to, to, to actually be one of the, the main acts on Otterius Jazz and Blues Festival, which incidentally took place at Hope Gardens in Kingston. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so that, that event was my first time on stage as an artist and it was, it was nerve wracking and it felt really uh, weird. However, it was exhilarating. It was the most amazing thing. I had members of the Black Soil Band um, on stage with me. Um, Glenn Brown is stringy. Um, not for them, and it was just, it was great. It was, trust me, it was a standout moment for the whole jazz and blues thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, um, do you actually um, sign with any label currently? No, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a signed artist. I'm right now independent all the way. Um, in fact, my label right now, if you want to call it that, is Hardcore Productions. That's H E A R T C O U R Productions. Mm -hmm. And that, that is that is my label for the time being. Until somebody comes with an offer that that suits me. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. So guys who are viewing, you can definitely look at Oric's YouTube page for some of his singles or EPs, right? It's it's all singles for now, still working on the EP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. What, what, what's your favorite uh, um, single out of the lot? Um, I have a few favorites, uh, but you know what? Because the one I'm pushing right now is called Give I Faith. That mm -hmm. one is my favorite right now. <laughs> why, why is this song your, your, your favorite? Uh, because it may push right now. <laughs> no, well, well, to be a, to be a little more serious than that is a song that's dear to my heart because it's one of those songs that just just it it didn't take any time for me to write that. That song came to me in like an hour. A lie. It probably took me about two days to write that song. And for me, a song that comes to you in two days is a really really quick song. You yes. know, from start to finish, it took about two days. Um, mm -hmm. If I can tell you a story, uh, uh, we, we went to Kenya 
um, Taurus Riley, Black Soil, and all of us, we went to Kenya for, for a few shows. And when we came back to Jamaica, I heard that the hotel that we stayed in was, was the target of some terrorist attacks and people got right. hurt and seriously injured and all these things. And that, the, the whole idea behind that song came to me. Um, mm -hmm. Give I faith. And if I go look up that song and listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, well, definitely. Um, so that was the, the creative process at that time for this song. Um, how, how do other songs come to you in terms of the, the creativity? Yeah. Um, well, you know, sometimes sometimes a producer might, might send me a track. And it's interesting because sometimes I love the track, but I'm not feeling any song, no song coming to me. And then there are other times when the track is, you know, uh, but, but a song comes, you know, so you can never mm. tell when you'll get a song. The way I look at my songwriting is the, the songs I write existed out in the universe long before me. So I don't mm. really write them. I just deliver them to a human experience. You know what I mean? So the song comes to me out of the spirit world then. And I, yeah. I, I just consider myself the, the vector, you know, the, the, the catalyst, you know, that, that yeah. moves that song from the spirit realm to, uh, uh, to, to the physical realm where you can appreciate it with your ears and your emotions. And you know what I mean? So, yeah. so I saw me look on my songwriting, really. Um, yeah, I, so I wouldn't, I, I don't even want to call myself a songwriter per se, because the songs I write really wrote themselves and just came to me, you know? Mm -hmm. How, how much of, of a plus being a musician um, when it comes to writing your own songs? How does that enhance the process? To be honest with you, yo, I'll be a weird answer as me have here this evening you know, because you <laughs> asked me some weird <laughs> questions. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like it's a plus and then there are other mm -hmm. times I feel like I might, I might be writing better songs if I were not a musician. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, because... I don't want to sound ungrateful and I love my gift, you know, and I respect my gift. But sometimes I feel like my experience in music kind of, kind of sometimes keeps me bound by the rules of music. Whereas mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't have that knowledge are not aware, is not aware of those rules and can just do things freely. You know what I mean? Like right away, if I hear something, instead of exploring what it could become, the, 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 the trained musician in me has a tendency to say, no, that can't work. Right. Yeah. So in that regard, it may be a little hold back, but I do believe that, that, that um, you know, in large part, it is a plus because mm -hmm. you, you, you can see clearly where you're going during the creative process. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't trade that for the world. Right. That, that's, that's why I really ask you because I know being a musician and you're, you're hearing things and you know the, the, the card functions, the card progression yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. You'll be more critical of yourself, right? No, that, that's not even a musician thing. I think that's an artist thing. Any artist, whether you're a dancer, painter, sculptor, musician, singer, whatever, we tend to be very critical of our own work. Yeah. But the good news is I'm learning. I'm learning that the things that we obsess over as artists don't really matter to the audience. Mm. Really, come, like as in the case of a songwriter. It really comes down to whether them like the song or not. That, that's that's right. really what it comes down to. So all the mm -hmm. wonderful chords and great arrangements and everything, none of that matters to the audience because the audience, their their only concern is, do I like this song? Right. Just to feel good. Just yeah. to be in the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah man. All right. All right. So, um, Craig, I'm, I'm happy that you are sort of giving us an understanding of who Quirk is in terms of being a, a producer, a music, yeah, a songwriter. But let, let us get outside of that now. Who is Quirk outside of the music? There was a time in my life when if you ask me that question, who is Quirk outside of music? I would say there is no Quirk outside of music. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, at, at this point in my life, there's so much more to me than music. I am a father first and mm -hmm. foremost. You know what I mean? I consider myself to be a responsible man, you know, um, which is not to say I'm more serious than anybody else because I'm a big kid as well. I love to joke around and have fun and watch cartoons and, you know, oh. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Big kid. Real big kid. Yeah, man. man. The boys must, must have a lot of fun. <laughs> Where that is concerned. Oh, I'm to you, man. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you, you know, you almost sound like you have an action hero. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, man, my action hero money goes into making sure my children have everything they need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Of course, I, I, I do um, watch some of these cartoons at times with my kids. And I... No, no, hey, um, you, you missed the point, man. Me not watch cartoons with my kids, brother. Me watch cartoons no? by myself. <laughs> yes. By yourself? <laughs> Yeah, man, we can't get to them new cartoons, yeah, man. I want to watch my Thundercats and my Silverhawks. Yeah, like, silver yeah, yeah, man, them kids, you don't know nothing about that. Nothing about that. Well, you, you, you have to allow your kids to hear that, that great um, guitar solo. Man. In Silverhawks. Um, yeah, Silverhawks. Yeah, man. Yeah, listen, there's yeah, a little joke. Hawk, you know, yeah, me, yeah, me, and my big son, me and my big son mess around with that. Uh, when he was a baby, um, mm. we used to be watching... Um, is it Silver Hawks? With a guitar solo, yeah. Yep, man, Silver yeah, man. And 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 so when he was a baby, we would be watching it on my laptop. And mm-hmm. when he was a baby, old enough to know what's going on, you know. But every time it get to the guitar solo, I'd grab him and hold him like a guitar and start strumming <laughs> on his belly, and he would just laugh and laugh and laugh. Yeah, man. Good time. Good time. Yeah, man. Still, still one of the greatest solos that, that, that stands out in my mind, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. That's not your course. Um, so um, let's talk about some of the person now who you have actually worked with over the years because this is always an interesting time for the viewers. Yeah. So I, I know it will be easier to ask you who we have not played for, <laughs> you know? Okay. Some of these well, people. You know what? Um, I think my first time, you know, experiencing a professional situation would be in 1998. Um, yeah, I was I was still a teenager, and I'm on stage at JCDC Gospel Festival, um, working with a dude called Kenneth Gladstone. He had two songs in the competition that year, and he was the only act. To use his own band, cause you know JCDC provides a band for the for the for the entrance. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I was part of that band, and it was just, we didn't win, but it was a great experience. That's where I met Garnet and and uh, Paul. Where Paul last name again? Basically, Paul. Paul Barclay. Richards. Paul Richards. No man, we don't meet Barkley yet. Oh, not that Barkley yet. No man, Barkley later on, man, when Catalyst came about. Okay. Yeah, man. So I, I met I met Garnet, and then from there I got a gig working with Sandra Brooks. Now Sandra was a very busy artist at the time. Every weekend we have two or three shows, and Garnet became somewhat of a mentor at the time. You know, he was showing me a lot of cards. Oh. The, uh, Garnet Garnet showed me that. The God of cards. The God the, of cards. The, the God of cards, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you know, started out playing professionally <clears throat> with Sandra Brooks and that lasted for a couple of years. And then I got, I got more, <clears throat> excuse me, more exposed in the gospel, gospel arena now. I'm working with Sons and Daughters, Portmore Vision Choir. I'm working with pretty much everybody. Um, there was Judy Moat, there was Colleen Davis, um, there was DJ Nicholas, there was Kevin Downswell. I mean, the whole lot of them. I, I've played with pretty much every artist in gospel. And then later on, um, I moved into what I like to call the wider music industry. Um, of course, people call it secular. Me call it the wider music industry, where I've played for quite a number of noteworthy artists. You know what I mean? Uh, I haven't played for everybody now, but I've I've done some work with quite a lot of artists. Uh, pretty much like everybody from Toots Hibbert to, I don't know, <laughs> Des and Chin. Uh, yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole nine. I've, I've done it all. Work with Shaggy, work with Sean Paul, work with uh, enough artists. There was Taurus Riley, obviously, because my longest gig was with, with Taurus Riley and Black Soil Band. I worked with Dean Fraser, Dwayne Stevenson. Um, Freddie McGregor, enough, enough. You yeah, should have me, you should have me write them down. I don't just pop out the school. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but but uh, tell us how you, how, you, how you got the gig with, with, with Taurus. 
that, that's pretty interesting. I was on tour with Queen Africa at the time in Europe. And uh, it, it, most of the shows we had, uh, Taurus Riley was, was, was on the show as well as a, a fairly new artist. And so I was just very impressed with just the whole vibe and the sound of, you know, Black Style Band and Taurus as a, as a as must say, fairly new artist. And the way Dean Fraser, you know, just, just, just owned the stage and all of that, I was very impressed. So if, if, if we were on stage before Taurus, then I would stay after we don't perform and watch Taurus. Mm -hmm. And if Taurus well, was on before us, I would try to get to the show early so I could catch Taurus. And that's how we treated pretty much the entire tour. And we got back to Jamaica and within a couple of weeks of being back in Jamaica, I got a call from Dean. I said, them need a keyboard player, them keyboard player jump ship. So I was like, Psh, of course, let's do this. Next thing I know, we had one rehearsal and the next day was show. And, you know, you don't get a whole heap of ratings for that, you know, for work with an artist like Taurus after one rehearsal. But the fact is, I've been studying that show for weeks and weeks and weeks on tour. So, oh. yeah, it was it was almost second nature at the time. So, you know, um, yeah, man, give thanks that, for that. You know, that, that, that was going to be my, 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 first, my next question. Mm -hmm. How did you fit in so well, you know? You know, interestingly, that's 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 kind of what I want to talk about tonight when we get to when we get to that part. But yeah, how do I how did I fit in so well? Like I said, it was it was fairly easy because I'd been studying the show, you know, just being so impressed with what was going on and just wishing I was a part of that band, and you know, it just came to be. You know? All right. Uh, bass player Glenn Brownie always said to me, "Luck is when preparation meets opportunity." So without even being aware of it, I was. I was in preparation for the gig, you know, just paying mm -hmm. attention to the show and learning all the songs and everything. Um, and then we get the call and that was the opportunity. So I guess I was lucky. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, in, in summing up all of this, Corey, um, mm -hmm. what would you say the limelight of your career has been? Wow. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> Been so many highlights. Um, what's, what's been the highlight of my career? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, you know, when when I started, when I started at, at, at the Otterius Jazz and Blues Festival, that pretty much was the beginning of Coric as an artist. And you know, I think that was just a, a, a great beginning. You know, that's a great point in my career um, mm. as a musician. Um, there have been other points as well. Uh, for example, when I when I was given the opportunity to open the show on tour in Europe, I think that was 2016. Every night singing my own songs in front of thousands of people. That was also a great, great moment in my life uh, as an artist. Um, yeah, I think I think that would be it. That would be it. Opening the show, mm -hmm. Taurus Riley and Elaine on tour every night for five weeks. I mean, it, it don't get better than that. Yeah, that, that sounds great. All right, Corey, I know you have a great presentation lined up for us, all right? But um, before you actually- <laughs> hey, not really, but I had <laughs> Before you actually get into your presentation, I, I just want you to encourage the younger musicians because just as how you have, um, you, you studied the Black Soil Band, and when you got your opportunity, you, you you fit right in, and you embrace the opportunity, and you did well. I know a lot of persons are watching for it now, right? I know you are a hero to a lot of persons. How would you encourage some of these young musicians who are trying to get into the game? Well, this is music, so, you know, we, we appreciate music through our ears, you know what I mean? So you have to listen, you really have to listen, be an avid listener, you know, like listen aggressively. You can't listen like a, like a consumer, you have to listen like a practitioner, you know what I mean? Listen, and also practice, you know what I mean? Practice makes perfect, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit delinquent to the whole practice thing, but really practice does help. Um, yeah, listen a lot and practice. And and you know what? The truth of the matter is, you know, 
there are things that might might trip you up as a musician. Certain things you feel like you can't do. Work on that. Practice it because the, the, the only reason one man can do it and the next man can't is in practice and you never practice. You know, mm -hmm. so listen avidly, practice non-stop. Serious, serious, serious yeah. thoughts there. All right? Yes, younger musicians and older musicians were not practice. You heard it from Corey. You heard it from Corey this afternoon on the Music Hacks Network. But, but Corey, how can we reach out to you? Because I must have want to reach out to you sometimes to learn some of those chords. You know, how Reggie, can I stop, reach stop, out? Stop lying, man. You have, you have Garnet to reach out to for chords. You have Otti to reach out to for chords. You have Chris Wright to reach out to for chords. You have Yellow. You have Weird. Yeah, come on, man. That's just off of the top of my head. If I should I really go into it, there's so anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, can reach on social media quick because I don't know what to say. You have some parts here, man. We, we really want to hear some of that some of that stuff tonight. You know, on the music acts network. Uh, you don't know where you get, but all right. Um, yeah, you can reach me uh, all social media at K O R I Q music and music spelled properly K O R I Q M U S I C. So that's Coric Music um, at, uh, at Facebook, you, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and my email address is Coric Music at Gmail. Awesome. Yeah, I miss it. There's Coric Music everywhere. Everywhere. Coric. Um, Correct. Yeah, man. Uh, if, if we decide for go Snapchat, it's going to be at Correct Music. If we decide for go TikTok, it's going to be at Correct Music. All right. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, what's the topic tonight? Correct. What was the topic again? Being appropriate and knowing your purpose. All right. Yeah. Why have you chosen this topic for us tonight? Because I think, it's, I think it's a very important um, a very important thing for us to reason about, you know, as musicians. And I don't even want to consider this like a presentation, but more a reasoning, you know. Mm -hmm. We can just roll our reasoning and just talk about it. Um, so wait, are you this now? Yeah, almost, man. I, I uh, almost, to yeah, man. To, to, to some of the persons who are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You and we do have viewers and subscribers um on youtube and i want to give all the persons who are out there a shout out welcome to the music hacks network and you are listening to the great my name's the rick the producer the songwriter the artist and the great musician you know and tonight he is going to <laughs> well this is music hacks man and we are talking to uh, as songwriter, so we have to make sure everything is up on, on Music Hacks Network. So also big up to the guys who are on Zoom, all right? I will not single you out as yet. When we come to the Q&A, definitely we are going to ask the person to be more interactive. You turn on your microphone on your video, only in the Q&A, not in the presentation, all right? So you're allowed to turn on your microphone and open your video when you are um, talking to Corey. So now is the time, Sir Corey. I am going to ask you to take center stage at this time. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls on YouTube and also on Zoom, I now present you the great man himself, Corey. Yeah, well, give thanks. Give thanks. I appreciate the, the invite to be on Music Hacks. Um, yeah, well, so the, the topic for, for me tonight is knowing your purpose and staying appropriate. And what does that mean now? I find that a lot of the problems we have as musicians and with musicians um, stem from just not knowing your purpose or not being aware of your purpose and because you don't really understand your purpose you're not really appropriate for example i've heard well keyboard players are notorious for this 
We'll be playing some contemporary Christian music, for example, some white music, so to speak. And we're playing it with some really beautiful black type chords, you know, which um, may, may impress other musicians, but don't really serve the purpose. Um, right, so it's a matter of just understanding why you're here. Let's talk about the purpose. Um, as in the case of church, because I know a lot of, a lot of um, Christians and gospel musicians tune into music hacks. As in the case of any church service, I don't know that many musicians ask themselves or answer the question of why am I here? You know what I mean? Sure, you're a musician, you're playing this Sunday or Saturday or whenever. So you are here to play, but what is your purpose within the context of the service? For me, my purpose has always been, and I say always, like literally, my purpose has always been, as, as long as I've been aware of, 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 of myself, that we, you know, my purpose has always been to figure out what the vibe was and to use my instrument to enhance and push that vibe forward. You know what I mean? That has always been my purpose. So it never, it never mattered. It, it didn't matter. It wasn't the most important thing that I was great with cards or fancy lines or anything like that. The most important thing was why, you know, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And this is something that I just needed to answer for myself. Once I answered that for myself, the people around me started to feel like there was something different about Corik. And Corik had this special anointing and Corik is just this great keyboard player. I've, I mean, I'm not trying to big up myself or nothing, but these are things I've heard. And I'm trying to show you that this, these, things, these things are said of me in a church setting, not because I am so great, not because I am so fluent with lines and chords and all of that. No, that's beside the point. People feel what you're doing when you're doing it for the right reasons. When you, when you understand your purpose, people feel what you're doing. So for example, there may be a moment when I can tell that, okay, what needs to happen now is that people need to fling up their hands and start bawling. So my job now is to make the instrument suggest all these things. Without words, the, the instrument and the, the way I play and the sounds I choose to use and the way I direct the band, it's all supposed to just lead to that. Or what if it was a situation where the vibe was excitement and high praise and all of that? Then we have to make the instruments say that because a lot of times, if you notice, if you notice dancers in church a lot of times oh god i hope i don't get in trouble with the dancers a lot of times the effect of the dance really depends on the background music yeah and so and we're not even aware of the music we just see these dancers and we feel like wow they're amazing if you should remove the music from that chances are it would lose a lot of its effect in most cases, you know, and this is because the music does a lot of the communication. It communicates not just with you on an intellectual level, but it also communicates emotionally, you know. And while I hear a lot of people in church saying, you know, the anointing is not emotional, you know, it's, it's a spirit. The, the truth of the matter is music affects us emotionally. And if you can get your audience into the right emotional state, then you will always have the right effect. But this always comes back to what's your purpose? Um, if I might do a demonstration here. Uh, let me try to turn up the keyboard a little bit. Right. Um, appropriateness. Appropriateness. Check this out. Now check this out. Both 
both times I played exactly the same notes. There was nothing different note-wise. It was always the same notes. But just the way you approach the notes created a whole different vibe. You know what I mean? Um, so once again, we're talking about understanding your purpose. Once you understand the purpose, becoming appropriate is almost like second nature. It just it will just happen. You know what I mean? Them say once where, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable or something to that effect. You know, but yeah, once you understand your purpose and you know why you're here. In other words, I'm not just here to play. I'm here to create an effect, you know. And that's just as it relates to church. The same is true um, if I'm on stage with an artist. I need to know what it is I'm doing, which is why we have rehearsals. But even in rehearsals, you need to be appropriate. So what kind of artist is this we're working with? Is this an artist who is open to us just going, just going wild creatively? Or does this artist want to hear back the song exactly how it's recorded? Because it's not wrong to embellish. But again, you have to be appropriate. So who are you playing for? Who are you working with? Does this guy want embellishments? Or does this guy want... For example, I've worked with Beres Hammond. And Beres pretty much wants back the song, same way how it record. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've worked with Freddie McGregor. Freddie wants back the song, see... Freddie wants back the song, exactly how it go. We now go... If you try that, you're out. You're out of the band. You know what I mean? Um, if we're working with an artist like Taurus Riley, for example, Taurus is very much interested in capturing the vibe of the song, but not so much locked into playing it exactly as it is. You know what I mean? For, for Taurus, you want to make sure so the song feel like the song. Yeah? But you are free to an extent to embellish and have some fun. If we're working with an artist like Kez Namdi, for example. Kez Namdi, great artist. I don't know if, if a lot of you know Kez yet, but Kez are going to blow up big. Kez is one of them artists you know, that he is, he is crazy about music, them way they, so that he will just leave you to just go crazy. And he will suggest some crazy ideas as well. You know what I mean? So the point is, you have to know who you're working with and what they want. I mean, we covered the church thing already. Now we're on to the stage thing, working with different artists, you know, understanding what they want. Because if you are the musician who, I think Otti alluded to this uh, um, a few episodes ago, where, you know, you have to be appropriate. You have to, you have to talk the language of your artist musically. Um, sometimes, especially when you get onto reggae and dance hall music, them artists, they love aggression. Them, it doesn't even matter what it sound like. If it sound right, but you look too, too calm, it not going to work. Sometimes you have to, you know, really, really dig into it and, and give them the vibe, you know? Um, there are situations also, like, uh, it might be a jazz situation where you're required to play, you know, lines and improvise and, and really just go all in. If you're caught in a situation like that, what do you do? Which is why I said earlier, you have to listen and you have to practice to stay on top of your game and, 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 and be ready for when your, your opportunity arises. You know what I mean? If I am playing jazz, uh, in a, in, for example, a jazz trio, I'll play very differently as a pianist from if I'm in a jazz situation where I am playing, I'm accompanying somebody else, you know? So if it's the choric trio and it's choric and piano and then we have a bass player and a drummer, then I'll be, I'll be showing off, I'll be out there, I'll be the man, you know what I mean? But let's say I'm working for a saxophonist, you know? The sax guy is the, is the man in, in charge, the man in, the man in front. I'd have to play a little differently because now I'm in a support role once again, it comes back to why are you here? What are you doing? You understand? Once you understand your purpose in any given moment, then being appropriate 
pretty much happens naturally. So when you find say, a musician, I'm sorry I've been blaming keyboard players all night, but other musicians, we're all guilty of it. Drummers go crazy sometimes. Bass players lose the pocket notoriously. You know what I mean? Keyboard players, oh God, you don't bother talk about them no more. You know, there are sax players who refuse to stop playing when them solo finish. <laughs> Horn players, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, when you, once you understand your purpose, you understand why you're doing this, again, um, being appropriate just kind of comes naturally. You know what I mean? Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, in closing, be appropriate by understanding your purpose, understanding why you're doing this and what you're supposed to be doing, understanding your job, your role, you know what I mean? And, and, and executing it with military precision, you know what I mean? And, I'm, you know, this may sound as though I am Mr. Perfectionist. No, not at all. For me, this is all a work in progress. Like the things I'm saying now, I'm saying to me as well. You know, because there are times I get excited and play some lines when I should be just holding the cards and, you know what I mean? There are times I slip up as well, you know, but again, it's a work in progress. And anytime you stop working, <laughs> working on your progress, why well, you're kind of dark. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for listening to me go on and on and on about knowing your purpose and being appropriate as if me have it together. Give thanks. <laughs> bless up, bless up, Corey. Yeah, man, I, I thought you were gonna extend this another ten more minutes, bro. Because just as as we were enjoying this presentation, man, you know, you you you, you cut it off. But nevertheless, that was an awesome presentation, bro. Give thanks, man. I appreciate that. Respect. Definitely. I, I um, hope I'm able gonna... to impart some knowledge and teach something rather than just talk. <laughs> Bro, well, we learned. We See. learned a lot. All right. Yes. So um, the most interesting part of this show is about to come. The Q and A, where our viewers and subscribers, our members and Zoom can really ask one on one to one questions with with Corey. So I'm gonna ask all the persons who are on YouTube. Bless up yourselves, guys. On YouTube, we have oh, Brandon uh, made his way to Zoom. Big up yourself, Brandon. We, are, we have Kalisha. We have Steve. Groove Doc. Marlon Campbell. Um, we have in JR, man. JR, right now I am in the studios of JR Burton. And he's on... YouTube at the moment, Dale Haslam. Well, you have Dale. Dale. We have Paul, the great Basie Barclay. Sir uh, B, have, Catalyst have, in the building, don't it? Catalyst. Um, we have Ronaldo Williams. And we have the, the God of Courts. Garnet Dea. The way oh, Garnet Dea. <laughs> They are Garnet Gibson. Makers of fine musical Garnet. instruments. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have the godfather, the legend, Delroy Thomas. Uncle right? Delhi. Yes, yourself, yes man. Bless up yourself. So all those persons are on YouTube. Guys, I'm going to ask you to type your question in the chat so we can see them so we can reply to your questions. All right? Let me pick up all the guys who are on Zoom. All right, let's observe Dom Bass, Jermaine, the two Jermaine, Francis and Johnson, Jethro, Robert, Tajay. Yeah, uh, yeah man, let's observe. All right, so let's go. everybody on this job. The Q and A. All right. I'm going to ask you guys to have your questions ready on Zoom. Please don't be too, too quiet. Tonight, you know how we do it. All right. So, um, Corey, yes, sir. in terms of being a producer, who is the, the, the biggest name that you have actually produced for so far? Wow. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So, producing and 
producing an artist and doing production work are two different things. You know? I've, I've done production work with I mean, oh God, oh, biggest name, Tess and Chin, I guess. Oh. Um, I, I, I'm heavily involved with Hideaway. Mm -hmm. um, I think Dale Brown played bass on that as well. Um, okay. I've, um, okay. I've, I've, I've done production work with, with Toots, RIP. Um, not for artists, man, kind of, you know, many. Dwayne yeah. Stevenson, um, uh, Loot and Fire. Mm. Um, the names them kind of slip me right now, but they're around, man, not for them. Yeah, man. Um, definitely want to see you at the Grammys in the in the future. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Uh, that, that would be an awesome feat, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good thing you have my music hacks now, because after the Grammy, we don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding, man. <laughs> well, you know, definitely, it's, 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 it's good that we can have you here before you actually get it. We can say, whoa, Rick was here, and we actually um, motivated him to press towards the Grammys. Yeah, man. No, well, we did motivated a long time, you know, so we're pressing. It, it, it's going to happen eventually. Don't worry about it. Yeah, man. Definitely. Definitely. You know, it's you see what them when, when, again, when preparation meets opportunity, well, I am prepared. It's just opportunity does kind of slow. What are you coming? Yeah, man. Definitely. It's always great when you see our Jamaican, our fellow Jamaicans um, excelling in, in those yeah man I, and the truth is i'm 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 hanging around many many grammy nominated musicians and musicians who have won grammys so you don't know if you mm -hmm. are the sum total of your closest friends then yeah, man. It's, it's it's coming man it's coming definitely definitely yeah man all right let's look to youtube so we have uh, one from steve d says good night how did you maintain focus or what were some of the rules you abided by on tour to remain to remain focused on tour yeah that, that's that's why i see here <laughs> why oi. all right um well touring <laughs> for for my first few tours, it's a, it's been a learning experience. A lot of a lot of you know mistakes were made, but you expect that when you have new experiences. Um, staying focused, really. Come again now. Yeah, back to what I was saying. It really comes down to understanding your role and your purpose. You know what I mean? Am I here to farm fool? No, I'm here to do a job. And the most important thing on the road is to make sure that you are present and capable when it's time for your job. You know what I mean? So the, the truth of the matter is, it may seem like a challenge to stay focused on the road, but remember, so this, is, this is my job. You know, I'm not out there just having fun. This is my job. This is my work. It's, this is how I pay the bills and feed myself. And You know what I mean? This is how I afford to live. So it's, it's a serious business out there. So when you think about it like that, staying focused is... Yeah, man. Definitely. All right. Bless up yourself, HJA Musical. All right. And I see the practice master here, the man who I'm going to take a page out of his book, Mr. Oral Brown. You know that name, Corey? OB. OB. <laughs> yeah, well, yesterday I, I, I was watching him, watching his live yesterday. Yeah. And trust me, or I was doing some crazy, crazy stuff in practice there. Yeah, man, we're right. a, a dangerous drummer, man. Yeah, man, truly. But let's have a Robert Dyer. All right. So, guys on Zoom, we need some questions, man. Come on, don't be shy tonight. Uh, the guys right. on Zoom know everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> they have answers. Maybe I should be asking them questions. All right, guys. Okay. All right. Um, Corey, in terms of your 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 rig or the, the, the type of equipment that you use, mm. 
tell us about um, the equipment that you use, whether on tour or, or no, that, just playing at a normal gig. And the last tour I did before COVID, before COVID mash up the business, um, my rig was a uh, Yamaha MODX7. And mm-hmm. I don't remember the two controllers and main stage. That was the rig, but but uh, that was that was a new experience for me, and I I, I really enjoyed it. In ear monitors and all of that, it was new for me because me used to the big monitors, a blast on stage, and five keyboards and all of that, you know. Um, but my preferred rig though would have to be, well, at least up until the last time I I performed on stage, um, would have to be the Karg Triton um, EX. Uh, sorry, I'm not talking about EX Extreme Triton Extreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Triton Classic and uh, Motif ES, preferably ES7. That is my preferred rig. Okay. Like straight, straight up hardware. I, I am, I'm a big fan of just hardware on stage. Um, main stage does have its, its, its perks, you know, the plus side, but not no be the hardware for me. True, true. Especially uh, when you have enough keyboards there, you can just set it and forget it. Yeah. All right. True. All right. Another question from. Well, this is not a question. Um, Arch. This, what's that? It's in Sirporic, man. Taught me at um, Sanjo Brooks. Maybe <laughs> I was one of your first students. You saw potential, but I didn't come back to your class um, to continue. That's Archie Designer. Archie. I hope I pronounced that properly. That, that one gave me a, a little twist here to, to, to pronounce. All right? Dale is asking, what are some tips you use in mixing? <laughs> um, wow. Uh, mixing tips. Um, for me, it, a mix really comes down to balance but the balance of all the different parts so that everything has its own space um, so balance eq um, so that you don't have you don't have frequencies fighting each other for example for example um, a guitar and a vocal or a, a kick drum and a bass guitar or you know what i mean so you you, you would use e, your equalizer to adjust each sound so that them fit together so for me it's balance and eq um yeah that's pretty much it i i be, i believe that if it came down to it where i could where i did i did i i had to mix a song without without effects i think um, i could actually mix the song with just balancing and eq okay yeah cool cool all right um john smith is uh, the person that um uh, i referred to a few minutes ago he said he attended your class, but he didn't have a chance to, to continue. Well, one of them things there. One of them things. I, I do hope that I left some, some, some positive impact on your door, Bridget. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, do you still do, do um, classes? No. <laughs> you know what? Um, I, I, I taught music for a little while on my journey. And, and it was just one of those things that you, you encountered on your journey to, you know, where you need to be. Mm. And I discovered that I have no patience for teaching. None whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, patience really is not the problem. For me, I, I just didn't have passion for it. I don't have okay. passion for teaching. So, for example, if, if, if you hear me playing something and you're like, yo, how you do that? I'd be happy to break it down and show it to you. I, I, it give me joy for, for what yeah. you learn. You know what I mean? Yeah, but to, yeah, say, yeah. to say, boy, be a teacher, I never had the passion for that. So I kind of had to let it go. Yeah. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I think teachers are, are created specially. I believe so too, because the stress we put them under dread for them to not strangle you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's take Tajay Walker from Zoom. And 
we have two, we have two questions for Zoom. After that, Corey, I need to play um, something for the, the, the audience. All right? Oh so we have Tajay Walker. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Tajay. Greetings. Bless up, bless up. How are going, Chris? Bless up. All right. Um, my question, my question, um, as I'm being a musician um, and you're an independent artist, mm -hmm. does it, does it um, damper either of, of, of the, the rules of so being a musician or being an artist itself? Does being a musician shadows you being an artist or does being an artist shadows well, being an, an musician? If, if, if I might, if I, if, allow me to, to, to be a little weird in answering this question. Um, Stevie Wonder, John Legend, Alicia Keys, Ray Charles, Corrick. <laughs> you know what I mean? These people are musicians and these people are artists. And it doesn't appear to me that being an artist affects their musicianship or vice versa. Uh, so I do believe that you can be a musician 100% and be an artist 100%. At the same time, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Respect. All right, bless up, bless up. Um, Brandon, Brandon, you, you had your hand up. Yeah. Good night. Good night again, everybody. Bless up. Bless it. Bless it. Yes, sir, Corey. This question no uh, relates to like um music production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. As a producer and like probably you make tracks and do things. Well, no probably. You know you do that. But yeah. Um, what are some of the ways that you use to like get your products across to like artists? You know? Well, I've I've been I guess fortunate to 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 be hanging around a lot of these artists. So, you know, it, sometimes Sometimes it's just a matter of just handing them, well, back in the days of CDs, or just, you know, calling them on the phone and just sending them a rhythm via WhatsApp. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I really don't know of another way. You know, if you know, if you know a producer, for example, who is working with different artists, you can hit him up and say, yo, listen to rhythm, you know? Although in a case like that, you are likely to be the beat maker and not the producer. You know what yeah. I mean? Which is a, a, a big, big difference, you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, it's really as simple as just walking up to an artist and say, yo, listen to this. And the truth of the matter is, I'm, I'm learning that, you know, while you might see an artist and think, yo, I'm not going to talk to me. Most of them, most of them really cool, you know. The hype is just, you know, imaginary. <laughs> For example, I hear yeah, the I, Yeah, go ahead. Tell you the truth, um, some, of, some of the times, um, like being in the space of these more uh, well known artists, mm -hmm. like, is that like a thing like fear? So, like, you, you can't approach artists here because no, is that is that me? I tell you just now, like, I, I used to hear say chronics hype, but I don't know of chronics as no hype youth. I mean, when me link up with when we see chronics anyway, chronics heal me, like, you know, what I mean. I, I don't know about that hype. Um, what if an artist? I mean, enough of them really cool and them approachable. They might not look that way, because especially if you attack dance hall, because you know we have to tough and we are gangster and toggy toggy and all that, you know. But that most of that most of the time it's just a persona. It's not it's not real. Enough of them really cool. And I say I think if you have if you have if you have dope tracks like you really have wicked beats. I think it's worth it for just brave it and just approach them and say, yo, Dred, you know, say, hey, me, me, me rate you as an artist and thing. I'm never really more listen to. Just make him hear it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I'm saying, no, move on to the next. One of them, I'll go say yes. <laughs> all right, all right, well, respect, respect. Yeah, man, enough love. All right, let's have yourself, Brandon. All right, um, before Jeremy and Francis and Jeremy and Johnson. Ask a question. Um, I'm going to ask you to break up things first, Corey, just to play um, one of those 
um, tunes that you prepared for us. I know you have about 10 um, prepared tunes for us. We don't know what prepared, you know, but you know it go. Yes, them dread out a road, I run red, I mean no know if me I go make it too. Road boys and police running wild in the streets and it feels like a war zone. Imagine my work so hard and can't let down my yard cause rappers won't come take my own. Goodness and mercy will guide and protect me so me know so me not alone. But I need faith to go on. In a disyaki I need your strength to hold on. Cause on my own I'm just not strong enough Give my faith to go on In a disyakiti I need your strength to hold on Cause on my own I'm just not strong Hearts of men have grown desperately wicked and them seek the taste of blood. No compassion for humanity, I'm wondering what they're made of. Judge something seriously wrong with you people, they no seem to have no love. And I'm of that point of view, that we need to turn to you, to give us faith to go on. In a strength to hold on cause on my own I'm just not strong enough give my faith to go on in a disagreement I need your strength to hold on cause on my own I'm in force I'm just not strong enough but if you stand with us and help us to rise up well nothing can harm us no, 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 because we know that even in this time, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David are going to still be Goliath. So we pray and we wait. But in the meantime, we're calling on you hey, to give us faith to go on. strong enough. Give me faith to go on. In a disyakiti yarning, need your strength to hold on. Cause on my own I'm just not strong. On my own I'm just not strong enough. On my own I'm just not strong enough. On my own I'm just not strong. You are listening to the great Quarric on the Music Acts Network. <laughs> Why does a hop on the great, great, great boy? I don't know. <laughs> Still working you are on a that? Jamaican, bro. A Jamaican well, music. Hey, all right, all right. Definitely. Nah, nah, fight it. Yeah, man. That was awesome, bro. Thank you very much. What's the inspiration behind, behind the tune? Yeah, so uh, this this song, <laughs> uh, I we went to we went to Kenya. I feel like I tell you this story a while ago. Yeah. We went to Kenya, um, Taurus Riley, Black Soil, Dean Fraser, and the whole band. We did a few shows in Kenya, and we stayed at a hotel. Um, I don't remember its name, but when we came back to Jamaica, after a few weeks, I heard that 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 same hotel we stayed at was attacked by terrorists. Oh. And people got injured, seriously injured and hurt. I think a few people might have died as well. It was a serious, like bombs and things. The place mush up. Mm. And um, I pretty much wrote that song within a day or two. Um, well, the song came to me. 
over that period of time. And you know, no, it was just for me, it was just my heart kind of just reaching out to them people there because Kenyans treated us with like like we like we were kings. You know what I mean? Mm. When you talk about hospitality, Kenyans through the roof with the, with the hospitality. The people um, practically worshipped us. You know what I mean? I, I don't recall ever feeling so much love from people just, you know what I mean? And not just the people in the promotion team or the people in the hotel, but even when I walk out on the street where people don't necessarily know who I am, you know what I mean? The, the love is like, them just it's like they take one look and they say, okay, he's not one of us, he's not from here, but we love him, you know what I mean? Them really, <laughs> them really, the people, them just full of love, you know what I mean? And that stayed with me. So when I heard that this travesty took place, it kind of just tugged at my heart and I just wrote this song pretty much for them. But the truth of the matter is the way how things are going in Jamaica and the world, you know, I think the song pretty much fits everywhere. So, you know, it's one of them things there. Awesome, awesome, bro. All right, let's take um, Jermaine Biggie Francis on Zoom. No, I'm not the message. Yeah, <laughs> you want to yeah Corey. Yes, I. Um, yeah, man. So my question to you now, all right, I know you as a keyboard player. Uh, you know, all Jamaicans know you as a keyboard player. So you transition from, you know, keyboard playing to be an artist. Oh, hard it is to get your foot in as an artist, <laughs> seeing that you're already known as a keyboard player, or oh, oh, hard that is for you to, you know, kind of get your foot in the industry as a, as a, as a singer or songwriter? Um, there was a time when I used to think about that, and I would think that, you know, the fact that people know me as a musician make it harder for me to get my foot in as an artist. But the fact is, you don't really think nothing goes so, you know. I think, I think every limitation that you could every limitation that you could talk about is generated inside your own mind. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, take Coffee, for example, the biggest artist in the last two, two three years. Zin? I don't know if, 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 if Coffee just wake up and decide one day she's going to be an artist. I, don't know. I think for her, it is true that preparation met opportunity and it just looked like luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure her friends knew her as something else, but it never stopped her from being a hit in the music industry. You know? Yeah. So while 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 I I, I would have agreed with you some time ago, right now the way I look at it is that if you see that as a limitation, it is a limitation you generate in your own mind. Nothing can nothing can stop you from doing what you want to do more than you. Yeah, man, but. Trust me, though. Me, yes, me, hear some of your songs, man. Trust me, you have some great songs, you know. Wow, give thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, man. that. Some great songs, and the one that well ever first may hear it, but it, it's well, hey, it's you know? on YouTube, brother. You can go listen to it for free. All right, <laughs> never take and guess what? No, I'm gonna hold you accountable because you are saying a great. You are, you're saying you listen to my music, and they are great songs. Songs don't become viral by you just sitting down and loving them. You have to share it, don't you? Yeah, man. Make good find that, man. Know yourself. So make we see if we can make some of them tune the viral, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Definitely. Respect, man. I'm blessed to be self, man. Yeah, man. Good presentation. Thanks, man. Respect. Appreciate All right. Bless up, Biggie. All right. Yeah, Let's yeah, start man. with Main Johnson, the man who calls himself Germs. Oh, <laughs> God, <Germs. laughs> <laughs> But I yeah, feel like I want to take a vaccine. And yeah. <laughs> are the good germs, man. Are the good germs. This All man. right. Are the germs that yeah. are in the vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> well, I go yeah, on, germs. <laughs> well, yeah, man. I go and take it easy. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, man. But one of my things, in what we need to ask you, like, um, sometimes practicing, yeah. right, can, um, can become weary or or some people that say boring then. Mm -hmm. um, how do you like find <laughs> material? Because sometimes you can't you can find something unless you, you can't research something unless you know about it. So how do you like go about looking for material to like um, practice and, and stuff like that to, to get better at what you do? Yeah, well, that's just it. Figure out what it is you want to do. <laughs> you know okay. what you want to do and if if there's anything about that where well, i beat you practice it um for me though uh how do i find material to practice 
I stated earlier that you have to be an avid listener. You know what I mean? You have to listen to everything. And you can't listen like a consumer. You have to listen like a practitioner, like deep listening and understand the intricacies while going on in the music. Um, oh. If you are constantly listening to music, I guarantee you, you are constantly stumbling, stumbling up on things you need to practice. Okay. You know, right, it's, right. It's, it's really that simple. If, if you like, you're not going to really sit down and scour YouTube looking for music to practice. No, man, look oh. for music to listen to. Eventually, something going to hit you and you say, Yo, that bad. How them do that? And you sit down and you practice that. But again, that is more like learning via like swatting stuff. You know what I mean? In terms of oh. actual practice, you talk about practice can get like a little weary. Honestly, man, oh. I, tell you the truth, I hate practice. I do not enjoy it okay. at all. But, but for me, practice is not supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be beneficial, but not, right. not necessarily have to be fun. Um, right. So when I start enjoying practice, I realized that most of, like when I used to go to Edna Manley College, that's when I really used to practice. Mm -hmm. And I find that Whenever I start to enjoy practice, it's because I'm playing something I like. But mm -hmm. you're playing something you like is not practice. That's playing something you like. Right. So we go right back now to... You understand what I'm saying? Run the skills. We hate that. Right. Yeah, yeah, you may have stumbled over the skills. We can a long time <laughs> in the practice that. The point I'm making, though, is... For me, practice is not even supposed to be fun. So I'm not trying to enjoy it. I'm trying to get the benefit of it. So at the end of the day, when me decide to start play, I don't have to think about what I'm doing because I've been practicing. So you know what I mean? Oh. So, so just forget back to, 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 the, to the question you actually asked me. Listen to, just listen to music. Listen to everything. Listen to music you love. Listen to music you hate. Listen to all of it. If You must find something to practice. Right, right. Come on. Come on. Bless up. Respect. Yeah, man, respect. Bless up, germs. Yeah, man, big up yourself, oh, Chris. Florida. Yeah, yeah man. Quirk, yeah, I believe that. And German, yeah, big yeah. impression. Quirk, 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 might not remember me, you know, but, like, a couple of years ago, like, Glacier, um, we were doing a show with Code 5. Code 5, and, and Glacier was, we were back in Glacier, and Glacier bringing Quirk as one of, as, as his keyboard player, his MD. And oh, trust me, the, the show, the show, the show, the sound system, everything will like, get trouble. But when you at least have some recording at, at the re rehearsal and stuff like that, it was awesome. Yeah, like, thanks, brother. Send me some other recording, man. Yeah, man. We still have them. If it, um, we still have some on uh, my Instagram page and whatever. So I'll send you some still. Yeah, man. But yeah, man. Of it course. was. It was. Oh, it was I, a oh, good. I hear that. Oh, I hear it. Respect. Yeah, man. Respect. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was a good, good, it was a good experience for me and the other guys. There. Respect, man. Yeah, man. Bless up. Mm. Cool. All right. Um, bless up to Cornell Bent and Elisha West. Those persons are joining us on YouTube. Um, this is a great, a great one. Um, Corey, who, well, based on what you said, Oral would have been in black soil before you, right? Yeah. All right. Now, Oral is saying this on YouTube. Corey has always been an inspiration to me, I especially in how he approaches the instrument. Wow. Well, wow. You see, you hear the thing now. Oral has never said that to me, ever. <laughs> <laughs> but Today guess what? No. Yo, but I lie. That is, that is really... A pleasant surprise. Miss Speechless now to back foot, for real. Oh, my God. Give thanks, Oral. Give thanks. Yeah. You know something, though? And the, I have said this to Oral before, but see me have the internet and the whole world for say it to, you, to know. Oral has always been one of my favorite drummers. Well, I shouldn't say always, but um, especially in the last half of my tenure with Black Soil, which, which would span about six, seven years, because I've been with Black Soil for, for quite a while. Mm. Oral has been one of my favorite drummers like of all time. So yeah, man, it's it's good for no say I, I've I've inspired you, Bridget. For real. Yeah. A long time in us see you, Oral. Big up yourself. Bless up, Maji. <laughs> well, um you um you guys attended Edna at the same time, right? Uh did we I, I remember seeing Oral at Edna, but I don't I, I know I think I was there before. I think oh, I was there before. Okay. Yeah. 
Because when I left when I left Edna Manley College, I, I was back there almost every year for about six years playing at everybody's final year yeah. show. <laughs> so, so, so I would have seen Obi. Yeah man. Right. Uh, Joel. Cool. Yeah, man. All right. We um yes. When he um, used to wear the thumb and tell everybody the same is Daisy Jones. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, what is that on Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> we never going to message me later, though. <laughs> yeah, man. That's a great one, there. All right. Yeah, all right. So, all right. So, uh, let's. So, Cardinalis and Correct, the general from Catalyst Days, big up Alicia West. Bless. I hope our young musicians are taking notes. All right. Those are some of the other comments See. from YouTube. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions on Zoom or... The people, them bright, Zoom. man. They don't have no question. They only have answers. <laughs> For so we have just about 10 more minutes to close off this live stream. But um, I, I, I'm happy that you, you brought up the Edna Manley um, quirk. Yeah. How important is it for a musician to be formally trained. I, I like to I ask this on the, mm. the network because I do support that, but I want to hear from you. How important is it? I guess it depends on, on what that musician's ambitions are. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, some of the greatest musicians I know have never been formally trained. You know mm. what I mean? Whereas there are also some great musicians that have been trained. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. you can be a great musician without training, but there are some things you can't do without formal training. You know what I mean? There are some gigs you just won't get unless you can read at a grade eight level. You know what I mean? Um, so that, that's why I say it depends on what that, that musician wants to be doing. If you don't intend to ever need formal training for whatever gig for you know making scores or anything like that and you don't need to be trained you know what i mean but my put my view on that is if you have the opportunity to be trained regardless what your ambitions are go get trained mm -hmm. qualify yourself you know what i mean be be not just somebody who does this for a living but be somebody who is qualified you know if you yeah. have the opportunity to do it go do it don't hesitate don't wait don't don't shy away from it but if life never deal you that, 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 that hand, still go out and be the best you can be with or without your training. You know? mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. I hope, I hope that answered the question. Yes, man. I, I do endorse that response. Yeah, man, respect. All right. <laughs> All right so we have Dwayne Davis. Says, Mr. Clark, I saw you playing at a wedding sometime in Lionel Town, Clarendon. He's asking, what makes you so proficient? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jesus Christ made me that proficient. Uh, wow. Well, first of all, thank you very much for, for thinking of me as proficient. Um, you know what, though? Um, practice. Because there was a time when I practiced daily. Uh, and, and really and truly, don't just leave you like that. You know, you, truly, if you don't use it, you lose it. But it don't just leave you like that, especially if you keep working, if, if you keep playing. You know, um, I do listen a lot of music and I do keep busy and I do have an ambition to, to, to always sound great when I play. I'm not always successful at that, but, you know. We do get it right most of the time. So give thanks. Um, what makes me so proficient? I would say, you know, practice. And practice in the sense of deliberate practice, running your skills and your modes and learning your chords and arpeggios and all of that. And practice as in, you know, you keep working, you keep playing here, there, and everywhere. You, you will get better at it. So, you know, experience, experience is a great teacher and experience has a way of sharpening the tools. You know what I mean? So gain the experience. Go play. Just keep playing. Keep doing it. Keep busy. And, you know, you, you, chances are you will become better at it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, Paulus is here with us on Zoom. Paulus can't ask me nothing. Me have to ask Paulus all the questions. <laughs> Paulus, 
Greetings, you can hear me loud and clear? Yes, man. Yeah, man. Watch him with him close and, you know, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, sorry. I will watch back Corey's presentation because I just come in from Champs working. Um, so I know it would have been great. Um, but I just wanted to add my little piece, and I'm glad I'm able to catch Mr. Corey live, Mr. Clark live, because he has impacted my musical career in such a way that I don't even know if he knows that. I guess not that he has impacted me, Chris, because one of my first times going on tour, which was the Cayman Islands, was to go with the, a group named Martin's Heritage. And the only reason why I got that opportunity to go is because Corey Clark could not have made that event or that <laughs> small tour. Yeah, so I yeah. went with a, a very well-known drummer who Corey knows that played for them at the time. Derek. Brother Derek himself. Yeah, and I remember when the leader came to me and said, boy, Corey, can I make it? Are you available? And I said, if Corey can I make it, and if Corey is okay with me going, why not? All if me never available. I was working and I found time to say if I can represent and stand in the gap for Corey Clark, that meant a lot for me and that bolstered and bolstered my career. So I wanted to tell you thanks, Mr. Clark, in this public forum yeah, for that opportunity. Many years ago, I still have the pictures to this day, both on Facebook and personally, because I got that opportunity. So I didn't see it as a bad thing for you not going because it was other engagements, I think, at the time with a very good group called Catalyst, I think, if I can remember. Might but you were there. right, engaged at the time. But because of that opportunity, which you had a big opportunity, I gained an opportunity and became a better musician through that opportunity, knowing the shoes I had to fill at the time. So I want to thank you personally, personally from the bottom of my no, heart for that. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, Paul. So, and I've that, seen you grow. Question. <laughs> you know, I've seen you grown over the years to become an accomplished producer and musician that a lot of us as younger musicians look up to. So we lift our hats off. Great father you are, great That's mentor good. musically, and you are someone that we can call and ask on anytime. So I want to tell you thank you from my heart and as musicians who look up to Mr. Clark. Respect. Thank Paulus. you. Respect, respect. You know, so I want to add something to, to what Paul has just said, you know. The one said, um, because I got an opportunity, it opened up an opportunity for him. And why it is so interesting that Paul would be the one to say that, because the truth is, one of my bigger opportunities as a keyboard player came when Otty, now you talk about great, the great yeah. Otney Lewis had something else to do, I'm not sure what. And I got an opportunity to play for Kirk Franklin. Wow. Because Whoa. Otty was busy. Mm. I think I have a picture. And that, that was, that, that, I think that was probably the second time I was playing for Kirk Franklin. I played for Kirk twice. Two or three times. Let's say twice, just to be safe. And, I, and there's a picture on, on my Facebook where it's me and Paulus that stand up behind the keyboard after the show. That's all whole reasoning. <laughs> yes that is very true very yeah. <laughs> very true and again chris as you can see i was able to stand up beside the general, the general. who was playing for the general on behalf of the bigger general you understand me and oh, i got an point. opportunity that's to be on I'm that stage as, on as that show so it go. you understand if me a man get an opportunity and that's man how the doors are opened and i mean to Does, learn from and to be inspired yeah day. man so we give thanks man so i just wanted to add that little bit i'll yeah, be man. definitely liking this video and i'll be watching back the presentation and i will always be able to message you afterwards if i have any questions which i will have questions respect Paulus. bless up bless up Paulus. awesome presentation from Paulus last week and in case you missed that live show last week from the man himself Paulus simpson Go over to Music Hacks Network and view it. All right. Uh, let's look into YouTube. Um, I'm sorry for you, you know, Corey, because I know the questions are rolling in Not on wrong, YouTube. Man. Not no wrong. All right. So just remember, say, I don't know is a very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. All right. Well, Elisha says, I hope oh, we took that already. Um, Yes, yes, let's take one from John Smith. Who were your early influences? 
Hmm. All right. And how do you approach songs for the first time hearing them? Early influences would include um, John Williams. You know, most know hmm. John Williams, one of the yes, greatest. Man. Music, I mean, every ad on Jamaican radio is John Williams. <laughs> you know what I mean? John had an album called First Fruits with Ruan Reed. And it was just one of the one of the, the, the foundational building blocks, you know, of, of my whole approach to music. Um, there's John Williams, there's Maurice Garden, of course. Um, there was early influences. Matter about real people that were like people we know, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, who else? Andre Campbell, aka Crusher, one yeah. of the baddest pianists you will ever hear coming out of this country. Uh, he was the reason I decided to go to Edna Manley College. The man oh. just that. Um, in okay. terms of like international, now, well, first of all, there's gospel. Um, I don't even know who was playing for Shirley Caesar at the time. But the Shirley Caesar people, them, the Ron Kenwally people, them. Um, and then, of course, the Kirk Franklin people, them, when Kirk came out with the Why We Sing and all them things. And then Garnet introduced me to a whole world of choir music. We're talking Mississippi Mass, we're talking all of that. Um, yeah. And then, of course, there was Morgan Heritage. Them, man, they mm -hmm. influenced my music to some levels. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, and and you know what, I, 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 it would be a mistake if I should leave out Catalyst. That entire Catalyst experience was a big part of shaping who I am as a musician. Yeah. Um, you know, the truth of the matter is, you take you take steps on your journey in life, and each step is supposed to teach you something. But you see, those steps I took during the Catalyst period, it was like, mm. yeah, that's when I started to become who I am. Uh, that's right. But yeah, hopefully that answers you. Who was it that asked that question? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, we did enjoy that Catalyst era, bro. That was a great time for us yeah, as man. musicians. And yeah. I see my virgin Jethro Reed in you know, the, the, on Zoom. Big up yourself, Jethro. One of my, 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 my little my little nephews, my little musical nephews. The one just grew up and turned yeah, one man. piece of bass player. Greetings, 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 greetings. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jethro is a home star in the music act, Oh. Yeah, man, every day. I, I want to squeeze in one quick question now. Jesus, here we go. Yes, boy. Quick, quickly, I know you are an accomplished musician as well as a father. Hmm. And I remember not, not busting your business where I went on a little trip and there was Corey with his two boys on a trip and making sure that his sons were enjoying himself at the beach, at the river. How do you find the time sometimes to spend that family quality time with your boys? And these are boy picking, you know, and boy picking different from females. Cause they sometimes demand that father figure up looking, you know? How do you work that time between being in the studio producing, staying up late at night, then on the road doing shows and to spend that family time? I don't know if that question was asked before, but how do you balance and find that time to be the father figure to be the great father you are, but yes, still to still be the accomplished musician you are. Well, um, wow. I don't think I've ever been asked that question before. I never even think about it really. Uh for me though, uh my 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 two sons are my favorite people in the world. Like very they true. Are my very favorite true. people. You can not say that. Very true. I, well, give thanks. May not even I say that just because they're my sons. I've gotten to know them as individuals, as people. Forget about the relationship. I've gotten to know them as individuals, separate and apart, like just people. Like, oh, I know you, Paulus, I know my son, them. You understand what I'm saying? And they are just, just when you listen to them talk, when you watch them personality, when you see who they are, they are my favorite people on the planet. So then, everything else kind of falls around that. I, that doesn't fit into anything. Everything fits around that. I hope that makes some kind of sense. <laughs> wow, yeah, because I know you're on the road sometimes and, you know, for some considerable period amount of time as well. So you keep that communication even when you're on the road with well, them as much as possible. Let me, and let me when you're here, bit. you try to be 
around yeah. them as much as possible. Let me, let me be a little bit fierce to do with the world as it is now with the technology that exists. Anybody who tell you say them them be too busy, I lie them, I tell. <laughs> you can't <laughs> too busy for talk to you, picking them, man. Thank I might, you very I, much. I might Thank not be able much. to talk to you right now, but I'll call you back as soon as me free up. You know what I mean? That's that's that, that's that's how I, you know. Like I said, thank, they thank don't you very much for answering my question, sir. Yes, yeah, man, thank you very course. much. Yes, everything around them, and that that's yeah, a good example for us who would like to have kids as musicians and to know how we can then therefore strike that balance. Thank you. Respect. Let's go, All right. Um, this final question from YouTube. Um, you spoke about um the usage of softwares or DAWs, I think correct. Um, you, you mentioned message. Um, there's a question here. What is your preferred DAW? Preferred? Well, I have always been on Nuendo uh, or, or Cubase. Um, outside of that, I like to mix using Pro Tools. I don't really mess around too much with the Fruity Loops and the, 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 the other thing, them, you know. Even logic, which I'm told is is phenomenal, really and truly. I do all my creation, uh, my, my you know music creation with Nuendo or Cubase, and then the mixing happens more often than not with Pro Tools. Paul Barkley will be happy to hear that. They <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul, tell me, say, move to Pro Tools, man, move to Pro Tools, okay. get with it. I tell you, I, I, I tell you. That's, that is probably the workhorse of the music industry. Pro Tools. It, it, it has become the industry standard. Mm, yeah. Definitely. All right. I am happy that, that this gentleman texted us on YouTube. Dwayne Grams Parkinson says, Big up, bro, Corey. You know, um, Dwayne Big was one Grams. of the, I think, the, the second interview that we did on the Music Hacks Network. And it was then that I learned something from Grams about you. For it, you are you are from Saint Anne. Yeah, man. And you are a great drummer as well. Well, you know. Is it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on. So, hold on. No, no. Let's get back. Let's let's backtrack a little bit. You asked me about my early influences. Um, one yeah. of my absolute earliest influences is Grams' father. Whoa. Yes, yeah, Andrew name. Parkinson. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To me, Andrew, Andrew Parkinson was just the greatest drummer in life. And between Adam and the last man we ever born before the world mashup. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Parkinson, to me, was just the greatest drummer in life. And to come and say, see, doing just come, yo, trust me. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so, so we learned about you before this day for it and 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 thank you grams for that all right Amen. so um Kirk, we are about to close this live stream it it has been a very productive show we learned a lot about who is Corey, and we do thank you sir for taking time out of your busy schedule look here no man Doing this, doing this live stream tonight made my day a busy day. Yo, <laughs> I swear, <laughs> being on the road, I tell you. But you know what? Give thanks. I really appreciate being asked to to come on and 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 you know be a part of this whole music hacks thing because I've seen a few episodes and yeah, music hacks really are going with things and the caliber of musicians that 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 come on here, you know, one would almost feel a little out of place. You know, but you deem me worthy and, you know, people tune in and I watch. So, you know, it must mean that I'm doing something all right, you know. So, <laughs> give thanks, man. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, yeah, man. You're, you're too modest, bro. That's, that, we, we, leave that, <laughs> we leave that right there. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, man. A real thing, man. A real thing. Yeah, man. So, before you go, or before we leave, I'm going to ask you to play one more tune, if you do not mind. All right, while we take our leave. Okay, not mind still, but the truth is a music hacks, so we did sign up for this. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely. Paul Barkley said, yeah, Corey, PT, we say. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Pro Tools all the way. Yeah. What shall I play? You know what? Me an artist. I'm going to play one more of my song. Then. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, e, uh. Well, nobody not going to broke my vibe. My stride, all of that can go to hell. Already made up my mind that I'm living my best life. Well, every day I have crowned is a good day. Instead of fight and quarrel and complain, give thanks and praise is what you should say. Cause every day I have crowned is a good day. Well, every day I have crowned is a good day. Instead of fight and quarrel and complain, give thanks and praise is what you should say. Cause every day I have crowned is a good day. Hey, blessings step on me everywhere I go. Just shine them sunlight through my window him say give thanks for life today because no one knows tomorrow so i give thanks no time for stressing every breath i breathe is a blessing respect to you ja. i'm confessing you run things i'm not guessing you run things because every day above ground is a good day instead of fight and quarrel and complain give thanks and praise is what you should say because every day above ground is a good day well every day above ground is a good day instead of fight and quarrel and complain give Give thanks and praise is what you should say, cause every day I'm off ground. I've got no time to be hateful. There's so much to be grateful for. You might never have your plate full, but from your living and breathing, stay cheerful and give thanks and learn this lesson. Every breath I breathe is a blessing. Respect to you, child. I'm confessing you run things. I'm not guessing you run things. Cause every day above ground is a good day. Instead of fight and quarrel and complain, give thanks and praise is what you should say. Cause every day above ground is a good day. Well, every day above ground is a good day. Instead of fight and quarrel and complain, give thanks and praise is what you should say. Because every day above ground is a good day. Yeah, man, yes, bless up. Sir. Bless up, Corey. Respect, respect. That was Good, good Day, day produced by Mario Mad Scientist Lawrence. Of course, written by yours truly. Yeah, awesome. Man. And we can find that on your YouTube page. Yes, but you know what? I'd actually prefer if y'all log on with the whole streaming thing and stream some music. So I don't know, I don't know the thing though, you know. But yeah, man, yeah. wherever wherever you find music, man, you'll find me. So go YouTube, go go Spotify, go wherever. It's there. Awesome. Yeah. Bless up, bro. Enough love. Give thanks, man. All right. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, viewers and subscribers. Corey, we'll definitely see you next week, Thursday, for another episode on the Music Hacks Network. Stay tuned.